Hello and welcome to Caesar Snack Sandwich. Today we're on Ethereum taking a look at something that's not so great. We're going to take a look at the Warp Finance exploit. Now, I'm doing this for two reasons. One, I'd like to give a shout out to some people who deserve it. And two, I think it's important for users to understand some of the risks, at least at a general level. So I will go into this at a general level. I'll explain to you what happened, what they did, but I'm not gonna give you all the little details of all the numbers, and I'm definitely not gonna give you a whole bunch of Ethereum wallet addresses. But I will show you where you can look for those if you want, okay? So here's the Warp Finance talking about this exploit, and we scroll down to number four here. This is the important one I want to talk about. These are people that decided to lend a hand to Warp Finance. Some of them are Yearn, developers some of them I this guy here I don't know who he is he's a says here he's a chief mathematics officer or it's FX so these guys here now they decided to help out with warp finance to try to figure out how they can rectify this situation now I believe that these people need some thanks now I'm not saying you need to send them money but you could if you want now what i do think they deserve is thank you for this because they're selfishly helping warp finance they don't have any stake in this game but they're trying to figure out how to deal with it now they are getting some benefits out of it like one they're getting an education on this kind of exploit because it's pretty new it's pretty unique and special and they're also you know helping support the system in which they have a whole bunch of bags in the entire ecosystem so to speak they are promoting a safer place for them to grow what they like and what they believe in and what they want to grow. So anyhow, these guys here, you can follow their Twitters. I'll link to this in the description and you can come here to number four and follow these people and send them a thanks. You know, I think that it's worth it. Okay, so let's move on to first warp finance. I'm not going to get into all the details of this. I'm just going to tell you kind of quick what it is. It's a protocol where you can lend lend things and borrow other things. Now, one of the special things about this protocol is you can lend them LP tokens. You can use LP tokens as collateral for borrowing single assets. Now, this is something I haven't seen anywhere before. There might be a few of these in some places like Cream or Finance or, you know, you can lend some three curve, some Y3 curve and stuff like that. But, you know, these actual Uniswap LP tokens, I haven't seen them used as collateral anywhere else, but here, and these are a very important part of what happened with this exploit. So as usual, I'm gonna go over to a flowchart and we will look at that first, okay? Okay, so here we are in my flowchart. Here is Sharky Mark. This is what I'm gonna call the exploiter, Sharky Mark, the pirate. Now, I don't know what his name is, I don't know who he is, but that's what he is today, okay? Sharky Mark. So Sharky Mark has come up with this special idea. He wants to make a few bucks, you know? Uh, it doesn't care so much about who he hurts, but he's going to make a few bucks, do something smart, intelligent for sure, and make a few bucks. Okay, so let's take a look at the first step. So the first thing he needs to do his step, to do his little shark attack, is to, he needs some WETH and some DAI. Okay, so where's he going to get that? He decides to take a bunch of flash loans from these protocols. Now, it's only two protocols, but he did flash, four, five flash loans all at once. So he did some flash swaps and some flash loans. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between those. A flash loan is when you borrow an asset from a protocol and give it back to the protocol in the same transaction. So he has to write the entire code, the entire transaction, all is one smart contract, deploy it onto Ethereum, execute it, and it needs to borrow money, borrow these from these places and put it back all in the same transaction. Okay, so that takes some pretty good planning. Now that's a flash loan. A flash swap is very similar. That's where you borrow an asset from a like a, a market, like an AMM, like Uniswap, and put the other token back. So let's say he borrowed WETH from this pool here, and he needs to put DAI back. Okay, so these are the two options that he could do to get some of these tokens for free, zero collateral, zero interest, but a small fee. Okay, they all will charge a small fee to do these flash loans. So that's what he did. He set it up, he wrote the code so that he could get all this money from these protocols. Now again, I'm not gonna get into the numbers. You want the numbers, you can 
look at the links in the description. So, so what's he do first? Now, he takes that borrowed ETH, WETH, and borrowed DAI, and he provides half of it to a Uniswap pool. So he mints some Uniswap LP tokens. He sticks the to half of his, what his loot, half of his borrowed assets in here, and mints up a token. So again, no numbers, but you get the idea. So he now owns a large portion of this pool. Okay. Then what's he do? Next thing he does, now this is all happening all at once. Remember that. So next thing he does is he uses the other half of this borrowed tokens to swap. So he swaps WETH for DAI. Now he's made the price of this change quite drastically. This is the same pool. Okay. So he's interacted with this pool by swapping tokens and creating the price of DAI to go very high because he's using millions and millions of dollars. I think the total was 78 million. I could be wrong. Um, can't remember, but anyhow, he does a huge swap, huge. Okay. And he changes the price of DAI by doing that. Now, why is that important? Well, because the price feed goes to warp finance. Warp finance is listening to Uniswap for the price feed. And this is where the exploit comes into play. This can almost be considered negligence on behalf of warp finance, but I don't want to say that exactly, but they should probably get price feeds from other places, not the places that they're also accepting the tokens from. And they ideally, they should get price from some third party that has nothing to do with these, right? Like maybe link, maybe, but you got to pay for link, but you know, they can get it from a whole bunch of places at the same time, or they can make their own price feeds. But anyhow, you get the point. This price feed tells them how much this is worth. Okay. And now it's worth a whole bunch more than when he put it in there. Right. So what does he do? He takes these tokens that he has gotten from here and he supplies them to warp finance. So he puts them into swipe warp finance as collateral. Now, remember this is worth more than what it was here because he played with the price, right? Then he borrows tokens, DAI and USDC from warp finance against this LP that he has supplied. Okay. So he borrows these tokens from warp finance. Now he's got quite a bit more here than when he, you know, than when he, the total value, if you turn these all into DAI, he has quite a bit more than what he had here. And then what does he do? He sends this back over here. So he does two things. One here on the way here, he takes a small cut. Now, because there's more here than here, the total value in US dollars, right? So he ended up walking away with 1,462 ETH, which is just under 1 million US dollars. Okay. And then he also used SushiSwap to convert this USDC and the remaining DAI and the tokens into the things he needs to repay these smart contracts. Okay. These loans. Okay. Now, why did he take USDC? Because one of these pools was probably DAI USDC or W ETH USDC. And he needed to pay, you know, he needed to do a flash swap. So he borrowed maybe this and had to pay back this. So that's why he borrowed this. Okay. And the swap is because, you know, there's maybe some other ones he needs to pay, or he wants to pay some wheat, some W ETH. Now, remember all of this happened in one transaction because it has to right now. The problem is in here, warp finance, warp finance is still owed this. They still owe this and Sharky boy, he's not going to come back and pay off his debt. Why? He's got his million dollars and he swam away down into the deep, deep blue. So he's gone, right? So what does it matter? You know, because these LP tokens are still locked in here as well. So that's what those, those people I mentioned before, that's what they're trying to do. They can't reverse this. They can't undo this, but they can try to figure out a way to get this LP out of here without paying back this token. That's kind of what they're thinking about trying to figure out how to do. Or maybe they think of some other way. They think of something else that they can do. And hopefully they can rectify this situation because some people are out of some money quite a bit because this is a lot of money that went in here and came out here. Like I said, I think it was around 70 to $80 million. And he walked away with his clean million dollars of free money. Okay. So 
I'm gonna swing back over to the browser and show you something. Okay, so here I am back on the browser. There's just two more tabs I wanna go through with you. Here is the either scan for the transaction. I'll put this link in the description as well. And you can go through here and you know read some of the numbers and find out exactly what all these numbers are. So as you can see, it's like 50s and 60 millions. There's a uh, $200 million swap here for, I, I don't know. So you can go through this and figure it out if you want, okay? The other thing you can do is you can come here and read this. I read this article, it's quite nice. It explains it quite succulently and clearly kind of good enough for anybody to read. It's produced by PeckShield. Now PeckShield does have a little bit to gain by looking deeply into this and explaining to it. You know, they are a security provider and if you read this, you will understand some of the threats and you might use them to audit your smart contracts or to provide security uh, consultations for your protocol. So, but still, it's nice for them to look deep in here and figure it out and supply this explanation to normal people like us, okay? So these are two more things. These things will be linked to in the description. And last thing I would like to say is stay safe, you know, put your money in places where you trust, where they have a track record. And if you do put your stuff in new things, don't put too much, you know, eggs in all your eggs in one basket type thing, right? Take care and thanks for watching and goodbye. Hello, thank you so much for watching. And um, if you'd like to support the channel, there are a few ways you can help me out a lot. Number one is I have a Gitcoin grant. This is a pretty unique way to help out. Basically the way this, this system works is if you supply me with any kind of donation, then the protocol itself will also match your donation with like an increasing amount, the more and the more the people donate to me. So for example, if you were to give me one die, the protocol will give me four die, which is great, you know, so your one die can go a long way. So please feel free to come here and check this out. You know, link to this will be in the description. Another way you could support me is by going to YGIFT, link in the description. And here, this where this says collect for me, it would say tip. You tip this and uh, you could give me some YUSD if you want. And uh, that would definitely help me out quite a bit. Um, another way you could support me is you could check out my Rarible store and purchase an NFT. Now the best kind of support is just you watching my videos and liking them and subscribing. So if you did that, thanks so much for doing that and uh, goodbye.